Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to tell you if this game's with your time and bandwidth. The game is Halo 3. If there's a fight, somebody's got to finish it, and that somebody is going to be Master Chief. Is this first of the 360 Halos and the end of Master Chief's original trilogy still good? Halo 3 is available on PC and Xbox, where it can be played through that Master Chief collection, which is also on Xbox Game Pass. It's worth noting that the series version updates this to 60 FPS, and the game is about 7 to 10 hours long. Where exactly is Halo 3? Well, it's a landmark game and one that honestly feels a little weird to review. But hey, does it really hold up in 2023? And yet again, this is going to be a single player only review, not the multiplayer. But I'll just say this game's multiplayer definitely absorbed my life for many years back in the 360 days, and I wasn't even very good at it. Anyway, onto the single player. Halo 3 is a first person shooter, big surprise there, with Master Chief crash landing back on Earth, ready to kick the Covenant out once and for all. Teaming up with the Arbiter from 2, Chief, Johnson, Cortana, and the rest of the gang are off to blow up some aliens and save Earth, just like all the other games. Halo 3's main difference is its campaign structure. Halo 1 was a hybrid of large open zones with small pockets of action and more linear set pieces. Halo Halo 2 dumped the open zones and was almost entirely linear. Halo 3 combines these two ideas to make larger areas that are more sandboxy, filled with enemies, vehicles, weapons, and more, and basically saying, you need to get here, there's plenty of ways to do it, figure it out. This leads to some of the most memorable and engaging firefights in the series, because you're essentially making your own stories based on how you choose to approach a certain problem. Are you gonna grab some dumb AI buddies and hog your way in? Or maybe hijack a ghost? Or perhaps grab a sniper and pick everybody off from a distance? Halo 3 opens up these options when it comes to encounters, and it's a much appreciated change. That isn't to say there aren't linear segments, there are plenty, but the game does well and balancing those with the larger set pieces. And speaking of set pieces, Halo 3 has tons, with plenty of crazy over-the-top spectacle, imaginative environments, and fantastic sweeping vistas, full of battles to overlook before jumping down and blasting a jackal with a shotgun. Halo 3 adds a boatload of new weapons, including a new grenade type, a massive hammer, new dual-wielding weapons, and more. Dual-wielding has been nerfed a bit since Halo 2, but I guess it's time to balance things out. There's also a lot more brutes this time around than in Halo 2, which do a lot to help keep the Covenant from getting stale. And all the new weapons follow Halo's mantra of having every piece of equipment feel unique. Speaking of equipment, that's the other new thing. One time use equipment. You have things like healing R's and defensive bubbles, mines, and so on that add more options to your combat abilities. And honestly, there's not much more to say. It's more Halo at its core, finishing the story of the original trilogy, and adding a whole host of new stuff and improvements to the mix. So what do I like about Halo 3? Well, once again, Halo's single player campaign excels at having excellent pacing with something new and cool to engage with back to back to back. And you can play it four player online co-op, which rules. Additionally, the sandbox style of battles with you being tossed into a larger area to make your own strategy is a fantastic hybrid of the best ideas of one and two. This also allows for some really great on foot and vehicle segment combinations. And lastly, the weapon balance here feels just right, with a ton of great new additions. Halo 1 had the OP pistol, Halo 2 had OP dual wielding combos, and Halo 3 everything just kind of gels together perfectly in both single and multiplayer. It's a refinement of balance that makes the whole thing satisfying. When it comes to the bad, unlike Halo 1 and 2, this one did not get a visual facelift for anniversary, just 60 FPS. And as an earliest 360 game, it does look a little rough, especially after playing the first two. Additionally, the ally AI is still just unbelievably dumb. It was less noticeable in 2 because there were less vehicle segments, but with the more vehicle-y sandboxy areas, having to rely on AI teammates is frustrating. Co-op will save the day. And lastly, yep, the flood still sucks, even if they definitely suck less this time around and really only are in like two missions. But still, I really don't like the flood. Can you tell? As you know, our game's here on a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, don't bother. Halo 3 absolutely holds up. You should play it. It's one of the most engaging first-person shooters I've ever played. And as someone who played the game to death on the 360, and I think this is the only game I actually ever beat on Legendary, I was worrying that revisiting it, it would have aged out. While there are a few old-school contrivances here, and the ally AI is dumb as toast, Halo 3 still is a fun, engaging, and great feeling FPS game that particularly excels with friends. If you haven't played the original Halo trilogy, grab some buddies and get on that. It's Bungie's crown jewel. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you played Halo 3 recently, let me know in the comments. I want to know what you think about it. But regardless, make sure you go out there and give it a look.